Today we're gonna do something special. We're gonna see the behind the scenes of how hackers get your Facebook and Instagram. How do these accounts get hacked with malware? How the data collected is sent? And how a couple of clicks can get all your online accounts hacked. It all starts off with a very simple message, but obviously the red flag in any message is any kind of an attachment, especially if it's a zip file. The thing with a zip file is it's compressed, which means it's harder to scan, especially if it has a password. Now the zip file itself may not be anything particularly suspicious. It's probably going to be some kind of a bad script or a PowerShell script. It doesn't have to be malware, and this is the crazy part. The script itself can reference malware on an online GitHub, GitLab project, which is what this does, by the way. It's only 431 bytes. There isn't much here other than reference to an online link. But if we go ahead and run it, it's going to do a lot of crazy stuff in a very short period of time. As you can see, it gives us an error message and disappears in a moment. But what it has done in the background it has stolen all of the saved credentials from all of our browsers and dumped them into a Telegram chat. And boom, as you can see, we have a new zip file. It has recorded the IP address, assigned a specific ID to this user, and this dump is going to give us all of the stolen credentials. As you can see, we've got different browsers, so regardless of which browser you use, it's got a dump for each of them. And if we go into these profiles, it's gonna tell us the cookies, the login state, the login data for the websites we have. So let's take a look at uh, the cookie.txt. As you can see, it tells us all of the different sites that we visited that we have stored cookies for. And we can even extract specific passwords like here. So for facebook.com, we've got a username and a password. And once the attacker has these credentials, they can log into your account, they can change the password, and now the account is theirs. It really is that simple if you accidentally run an info stealer on your computer. So it is definitely something to look out for. Now at this point, you may be wondering, well, this is still some kind of sophisticated malware that you have to be very tech savvy in order to write. You have to be very skilled and a really skilled hacker isn't going to go after a user like you. And that is true. But the thing is, nowadays, malware is available as service. So someone could simply write a bad script like this to reference a malware library created and sold by some kind of hacker group in the dark web. They would have a tool and they would just put in their telegram details and they could get stealer logs just like this. I really hope this gives you an attacker perspective of how easy it can be to collect and hijack credentials. And this is not just for Facebook or Instagram, it can be any online account. It can even be online accounts that are using other authentication methods because they can collect the tokens. So you know, when you go to a website, you say, keep me logged in. And the way it does that is there's a cookie, there's local information on your computer that's telling the website, this user is already logged in, it's authenticated. And if that information is stolen, sometimes the attacker can just log into your account without even using your username or password. Now, thanks to a full enterprise version of triage that I have, I did do a full dynamic analysis of this particular bat file just to show you the process of how these things happen. So at first, it makes a network request, gets information about the computer, deletes itself, drops a startup file, executes a dropped exe, and then reads user profile data of web browsers. If we go into a little bit of the details in the behavioral section, you can see what's actually happening here. So we're running cmd.exe, which by the way, is a perfectly legitimate system process. It's command prompt. And then we're using curl in system32, again, legitimate stuff, PowerShell, another Windows EXE. And the key thing to notice, this isn't some kind of malware binary that's doing all of the malicious spying or data collection. These are legitimate system process doing it, which is why it's very hard to detect sometimes. These days, a lot of malware is not a simple malware EXE, but rather an attacker using a bunch of different system tools to do what they want. So if an antivirus is simply relying on whitelisting or blacklisting, it's gonna think, well, these are all safe programs, so nothing wrong here. But of course, if you look at the actual content of what it's going through, it is quite concerning. Now, you may have also heard about bots on social media. They 
there are a lot of bots on Facebook, on Twitter, all of the social media platforms. And you might be wondering, what are these bots for? Sure, some of them may be for spreading political misinformation, but a lot of them are parts of some kind of an attacker botnet. Now, these botnets are often used to target business accounts. What that means is you're going to have users who have had their accounts hacked potentially or just bought accounts sending businesses messages like this with an info stealer attachment. Now, a business may have a social media manager, someone who is not very familiar with tech or computers, like what happened with Linus Tech Tips. He had an employee who clicked on an info stealer malware in a sponsor offer. A similar thing could happen to a business on Facebook very easily through one of these fake botnet accounts. Here's the full flowchart. So it starts off on Facebook Messenger. A lot of users get sent these info stealer malware links and those of who execute it get the payload which is on GitHub or GitLab. And then you've got the actual Python stealer that's deployed. And then the stolen credentials get sent via Telegram or Discord. Now this gives them a success rate of one of 70. So for 70 messages sent out by these bots, one of them ends up infecting a real user. So again, for those of you who might be thinking, well, who would fall for this? Not everybody, but one in 70, and that's good enough to make a huge profit as a cyber criminal. This particular campaign that was uncovered by our sponsor, Scardio, originated from a Vietnamese group. So this is a Southeast Asian malware. And another thing to keep in mind is that a lot of these attacks are local. So you might get them in your own local language and they may target users and businesses who may not be very tech savvy. So make sure you share this video if you found this information helpful. Try to get it to people who may not have access to it because of course, if you're tech savvy, you know not to run a bad script and a zip file in an attachment. But it may not be obvious to the social media manager responding to random customer inquiries about their Amazon product. I'd also recommend going through this article because it goes through all of this in great technical detail and depth for those of you who are interested. They also share all of the IOCs. So if you wanna get the samples, here it is. Also a big thank you to Guardio. Guardio, of course, is a web extension that can protect you from all sorts of online threats, including info stealers, by integrating directly into your browser. They're very good against exactly the kind of scams and phishing links that hit home users. And it's multi-platform. It can protect you on a Mac or a PC. They also protect you from identity theft by monitoring your accounts for any kind of data breaches. They have also recently added a feature called account protection that monitors your session tokens for Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and X, and prevents info stealers from hijacking these accounts. So even though it may look like a simple extension, they're doing a lot of work behind the scenes. You can try them out for free using link in description. Let me know your experience in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. This is Leo, and as always, stay informed, stay secure.